Hey guys, welcome back to the channel, or if you're new here, welcome officially to the channel. This is, as you know from the intro, a series where I go into odd game accessories or peripherals the developers made to get us more into the game mentally or physically. Today, today what I have for you is something pretty unique and that, honestly, I had totally forgotten until one of my new members, SusanFit47, asked me to look into it and all kinds of memories came flooding back. So if you have a moment, sit down and hang out while we go into an interesting modification for the Nintendo Entertainment System, the Pro Play Arcade. In the 1980s, the Nintendo Entertainment System was pretty much all the rage. Things had gotten to the point where the term playing Nintendo was pretty much synonymous with video games, at least in general in the United States. It was so popular, tons of add-ons were made for the console. Some were licensed like the Nintendo Power Glove and some were odd third-party accessories like the Youth Force. However, some wanted to make your NES and even your Sega Master System act more like an arcade system. And that's where our current product comes in. This was made by a company called Eclectic Products, who seems to be more well known these days for DIY products and possibly skins for the Nintendo Switch. I'll be honest, I'm not even sure if this is the same company, or if it's just that they left the electronics business a long time ago. Any way you look at it though, this is another rather rare and unique accessory to either system. I know what you're asking them, what is this thing really, and how did you get one, and what did it do? Well, let's dig in a bit and take a look at this thing, shall we? First off, this was essentially for all intents and purposes, well, a one-up arcade solution for your NES or Master System. Yeah, by the way, this worked on the Master System as well. We'll, we'll, we'll go into that in the other systems in a bit. It did this in much the same way that you would unpack and assemble one of the one-up arcade machines. You would do the same here. But in this case, you would plug everything into a 20 to 23 and a half inch TV, which wasn't included in the kit that was sold to you at all. What came was basically a large frame with two arcade sticks that had two buttons apiece. Along with that, you'd have a slot that you could slide your system into. This would ultimately leave your console exposed so that you could change out cartridges as you saw fit. I know what your next question is though, how in the heck did you control the console? Well, from what I can tell, and this is mostly from images, is that they wired the cables from the individual bu arcade buttons into a harness that would plug in like an NES controller on the unit itself. This would basically give you an arcade stick-like control on your console. Keep in mind, this would have a harness based on the console of your choice, meaning if you pick the NES one, it would come with NES plugs or Master System plugs if you chose that one. Rumor has it they even had a model of this that was compatible with this SNES and the Genesis as well, but that would have needed a more six button layout and I was unable to find any images of that in my searching. Now, much less <laughs> find a good picture of this thing at all. Uh, I, I could, really couldn't confirm whether this actually worked with the 16-bit systems at all, quite frankly. I know it worked with the 8-bit, but the only one I could ever find a picture of was the NES which is strange. The most funny thing about this product is most of us, if any of us at all, only saw these when we were younger and probably only in a Toys R Us retailer. The only other way I could think of or that I could find that you could get a hold of these was mail order. And given the rather hefty cost of almost $250 for something that as far as I can tell from the adverts didn't come with a TV was pricey especially given it was available around 1988, one year before the Genesis would hit the shelves and roughly two years before the Super Nintendo would release. It's not like you wouldn't get use out of it if you wanted one though. The Nintendo Entertainment System library pretty much holds up well to this day and had been supported up till around May of 1995 when its final game, The Lion King, would see its release, officially ending the era of the NES entirely. I am curious, how many of you saw one of these in the stores? Did any of you ever get a chance to play on one? If so, how responsive were the buttons? Was it hard to set up? How hard was it to use as a young kid playing an NES on a stand-up arcade? Let me know in the comments. For now though, thank you so much for watching and spending part of your day with me. If I can ask you for one more favor, please leave this video a like. And if you haven't, consider subscribing. That helps me out a ton. Until next time though, have a great rest of your day, and happy gaming.